Hi, welcome to GlobalInvestorRadio.com. This is the first in the series covering tape reading and market tactics, originally published in 1931, and it was a book written by Humphrey B. Neal. This is the cover of the book that I've got at home, and it's an outstanding book that gives you a great insight into how professionals operate in the market. I'm just going to be reading some of the preface uh, today from the book, just to give you a general idea of what the book contains. In the making of this book, the tale literally has wagged the dog. The original plan was to collect inbound from a number of editorials written and published in a little magazine called If, As and When. As I set about coordinating and editing these various manuscripts, the thought presented itself that every speculator has three steps to climb before he can expect consistent market success. These are, first familiarising himself with the power and the methods of the professional speculative groups which operate behind the tickers. Second, learning the principles whereby he may interpretate the manoeuvres of these groups and the actions of the public. And third, and more important, attaining a mastery of, him, of himself, of his temperate emotions, and the other variables that go up to make up human nature. In conference with the publishers, it was then decided to make the main portion of this book a treatise on the interpretation of the ticker tape, insomuch as there have been any number of inquiries about and requests for instruction in tape reading and market tactics. Consequently, the reader will find this volume divided into three parts. The first being a brief review of stock speculation, the second the above-mentioned treaties, and the third a group of selections from what was to have been the whole, the plan being thus designed to cover the three steps to su successful stock trading. Candidly, I tackled the task with a fair amount of stage fright, realising that for many years no book had been published on the subject of interpreting market movements from the action as revealed on the ticker tape, and also because I have been told by many traders that what they learn from the tape comes to them only after years of experience, which has finally given them a second sight or intuitive eye. I am not insensible to this belief, but I am convinced that any intelligent person with perhaps an extra grain or two of common sense and mental agility can learn in a comparatively short time to tell from the tape what is likely to happen. Right here, however, I should like to inject my personal opinion that anyone who attempts to catch the hourly or even daily fluctuations of stock prices is entry, entering upon a risky, foolhardy enterprise. There may be some traders who have made and are making money from these so-called scalping operations, but I have never met one who was successful for long. And in talks with brokers, I have been told again and again that the in-and-out trader speculating for a turn lasts but a few months. The reader will find arguments to substantiate this, this view throughout the following pages. It must be recognised that there are methods of gauging the manipulative and speculative forces in the market other than that of reading the stock ticker tape. To many, the thought of tape reading is sinister and reeks of gambling. These same persons, however, will listen to tips and will scan broker letters and the financial papers in the hope of hitting upon some commitment whereby they will reap a fat profit. The tape records the prices at which buyers and sellers have met and agreed upon exchanges of stocks for money. This same record may be printed upon sheets or grouped for a day's business and published in the newspaper. It may be recorded upon charts. What are the odds? Some speculators and everyone who buys common stocks with the expectation of sometimes selling at higher prices as a speculator may wish to draw their conclusions from the tape. Others never have the time to look at a ticker and may depend on other forms of records. There is no quarrel here. Each one must decide for himself from which he secures his data. There is this to be said against constant tape watching. Unless the trader has secure control of himself, there is a grave danger of his perspectives becoming too confined 
and of his placing too much importance upon minor details within the various days' records. The middle road appears without question to be the most profitable for the average conservative speculator. If he travels this path, he will return to the tape only upon occasions and will retain a clear head for the broader objectives ahead, rather than have his eyes and mind glued on the confusion of nearby objects rushing past him. The principles of analysing market action are the same, whether employed to interpret short-term trading trends or followed in order to determine the exact extent of the far safer intermediate trends, which last for anywhere from three weeks to six months. There are any number of books published which relate to other forms of market interpretation, chart reading, statistical studies, fundamentals and other factors. All have their advantages and good points. It certainly is conceded that one cannot have too much knowledge of the forces which make the market. Recent years have demonstrated that the public generally knows little of what actually happens within the realms of common stock speculation. The emphasis throughout this book is upon the human equation as it relates to market action. I have attempted to make stand out in relief the difficulties besetting the speculator and to discuss informally many factors of stock speculation which have been practically ignored in other books. The principles are not new. In fact, I believe them to be behind the accepted practice of all successful speculators. I hope, however, that the presentation is helpfully different and that it will bring into sharper focus the more important problems which must be solved if we are to trade in the market with profitable results. In accumulating and selecting the material for this book, I have drawn heavily upon the experience of others, and I only wish that I might thank each person individually for whatever share he has contributed. That would be impossible without listing hundreds of men with whom I have had the pleasure of discussing the market. Likewise, I am indebted in large measure to the thousands of correspondents whose letters of inquiry on investment matters I have read and studied. These experiences have aided me in the development of an understanding of the public's mind and of how the public acts in the market. I owe to my associates in business more than I shall be able to repay, but I thank them for the privilege of um, absorbing much knowledge from their economic, statistical and graphic studies. In particular, I tender thanks to Buchanan Tyson and Arnold W. Westall for many of the ideas expressed within these pages and for their generous aid and suggestions at all times. To Richard W. Scharbacher, Harold C. Walcott and Harold M. Cool, I am also greatly indebted for their patient reading and constructive cri criticism of the manuscript. And I wish to acknowledge with gratitude the work of Stanley W. Mahon in drawing the charts. To the reader, I acknowledge full responsibility for the views and opinions expressed herein, and I hand him this book with sincere humility, knowing full well the danger which lies in offering any text on how to do it. No system of forecast in the movements of stock prices ever can be infallible. However, there are many pitfalls in speculation which may be avoided, and it is my hope that somewhere within these pages the reader will find hints and suggestions which will enable him to dodge the crowd and forever resign his membership in that great club. The public after which title there is added in stock market circles, the Ifiat, always wrong. New York City, February 1931, Humphrey B. Neal. And again, check out the Oak Trader Report. Uh, it's released Hong Kong time on a Sunday before 11 p.m. Go to globalinvestorradio.com and click the Oak Trader tab. And in the ensuing couple of weeks, I'll be uploading some more uh, parts of the book, Tape Reading and Market Tactics by Humphrey B. Neal. Okay, have a good day and over and out.